welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be starting an office refresh. So not a crazy project, but probably a few day project um, and something that I'm going to film over a little bit of time. But we have been living in our apartment now for about two months. I filmed sort of an apartment walkthrough video and talked about my goals um, a little bit ago. So I will post that up here. I would recommend starting with that one. Um, but today we are going to dive into the office. I think I have greater goals for the space, but today and this video is going to be kind of part one. Um, primarily I'm going to be DIYing my desk. I have a vision that I'm hoping I'm able to execute with it and I want to figure out my bookshelf which is an absolute disaster and hang a light in here maybe so we can stop using um, this gold lamp behind me that you can't really see but it is essentially just a lamp with a naked light bulb in it um, and just kind of make it feel less like this is a space that we've just moved into. So I'm gonna flip the camera around, show you where you are, where we are now, talk through kind of my vision for the space, what we're going to be doing in this video, and yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this video is truly the natural, <laughs> true um, view into what this office looks like, which is a disaster. 90% of the time we just haven't quite taken the time to really make it nice yet or not a disaster zone um, Everything that we don't know what to do with ends up in here. I think everyone has a space like this in their home. So This is ours and I am learning to accept it and also we are going to fix it So this is my desk currently. I got this from Facebook marketplace. It's not like an amazing desk, but I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted for a desk and this one was pretty affordable and I thought that I could try a DIY on it. That could be cute. So I'm going to paint it green, I think, but I'm a little bit torn because I actually think that it would look cute as a white desk too. I don't know. It has the most bizarre felt detailing on it. I got it from Craigslist. I thought it was like a gap, like these were two drawers. Uh, but no, I, there's like felt in here, which is the most bizarre thing. But I want to try doing a border on the front of the drawers, caning behind that, painting the desk. And then I got some, um, just like a ball joint roller thing to put under there. Not because I think it's going to roll easily on the carpet, but because this desk is actually just like a little bit too low for me. So this is going to be the primary DIY attempting to make this desk cuter, a little bit more me, and to get rid of this like bizarre felt detailing. We also have this closet here, which is my craft closet, but this is just a series of boxes now. This is going to be a later video, but I want to build shelves in here and then um, get some really cute bins and just make it feel like a really intentional, beautiful craft closet. <laughs> um, sadly, I didn't do that before Christmas because I really go ham on my crafting supplies at Christmas and I had to dig through boxes a lot. Okay, here is our bookshelf. So this is a different bookshelf than we used in our last apartment and that other bookshelf is being used in our kitchen now so having to rethink this shelf in here and it is just so cluttered and I just it's like probably too many books for it but I don't want to put two bookshelves in here so I need to probably do another round of purging in here and um, just make it look not like this. <laughs> this is the aforementioned lamp. This is actually a kind of cute lamp. I got some brass, so I'm gonna try to fix it up, but it, I don't know, I really was just like a ceiling fixture in here. And then this is Eric's desk for now. It's like a faux L desk that we made using just desks that we had had from our old apartment. I'm just zooming in here on what is the true, true, true bane of my existence. Um, I think he is going to get a standing desk, maybe about this size, maybe a little bit bigger. He just got these speakers a little bigger than he expected, so they're taking up a lot of desk space. Um, but his 
desk vibe is a little bit different than mine. As you can tell, if it was me, I would be going like very kind of like cottagey in here, but we're just gonna have to also incorporate a bit of like black computer aesthetic into the mix. And then we get to the really offensive part of the room. <laughs> so boxes, these are just because Eric got these speakers yesterday. So those are obviously not gonna live here. Just some moving stuff that we need to deal with. This is the lamp that I got on Facebook Marketplace that I'm gonna try to hang on the ceiling in here. Um, this is my trampoline. I got it as a steal, so I'm unwilling to part with it yet, but I am not trampolining a lot these days. <laughs> And same for my hula hoop. Turns out hula hooping is very hard and I don't do it because I'm not very good at it. <laughs> and then we have this closet. So we're so fortunate to have a pretty good amount of storage in this space actually. Um, and all of our clothes fit in our bedroom closet. So this closet is like our stuff closet. We currently have this in here just because we didn't really have anywhere else to put it. Um, and it is nice that you could open the door and then you kind of have like a record playing situation. But the reality of it is, is that we forget that we have it so we don't play records very much. Um, I am thinking of trying a hack with this Ikea bookshelf thing, I can never remember the name of it, and making it into a console in our living room, mounting the TV on the wall, and then putting the record player and the records and the speakers out there. Um, all the tape decks, hopefully not. <laughs> it's just like a lot, it's a lot of look. Um, but hopefully we can have like a streamlined setup in the living room. And then this can be storage for, I don't know, something else. This is kind of craft storage stuff. So this will probably go in my craft closet actually. This is just tapes and then Actually, we're very fortunate this half of the closet over here is like not even really utilized. So we have a pretty good amount of space in here. This is just art that I haven't taken the time to unpack yet. And then the other category of stuff that we have in here is tools. So eventually when we reorganize this closet and maybe move the records and stuff out, we'll build tool storage in here. Um, and then we basically have Eric's wetsuit. So. <laughs> This is the office as it stands. Have a plant here and this sort of round table thing that I hate. And also this that I hate. Oh, I just. Sadly, 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 we have our internet plugged in here because it's plugged into Eric's computer and that is apparently important. But because we have so many walls between here and our living room out there, we have to put a repeater. So we have this cord. Oh truly debate of my existence. Okay, so where we're gonna start today is the desk. So I'm gonna take everything off of it, take it out onto the patio and sand it off first as my first step and then we are going to test paint colors. So let's get started. So to take this out and sand it, I've just taken the drawers out. Um, I realized I didn't say this is like not real wood. I cannot for the life of me think of what it's called right now, but she's not real wood. So sanding it is not like, I think a mandatory thing in order to paint it. Um, but I am hoping that it's gonna make the paint stick a little easier. Um, I'm also not gonna paint the tops of the drawers because I'm gonna put caning on here and I feel like the color of the green behind the caning will stand out too much, but I am thrilled to <laughs> take this off and like, oh God. I mean, this is just the most bizarre detail to me. This is gonna be a two, two hand process to take this off and forever say goodbye to this weird, weird, weird felt detail. <laughs> Do you ever start a project when you're home alone and you're like, I should really probably wait for someone else to come home <laughs> and help you, but you also don't wanna wait. So then you end up dragging a desk sort of awkwardly through your apartment uh, because patients would maybe never avert you that you had. Anyone else relate to this? To this energy where you make yourself struggle for no reason? Just me? Me alone? Did I? Okay.
Okay, we're out. I will say, whenever I do decide to do things when I could just wait for someone to help me, sort of stubbornly, I always feel very strong after anyone else really out of breath apparently, <laughs> um, but strong. So we're here, we barely fit on the little deck, barely fitting. I found some sandpaper, 60 grit, maybe not exactly what I would have gone for, but it should do the job. So I'm gonna do a quick sand. Okay, we're all sanded and that felt was surprisingly difficult to remove <laughs> from the drawers, which I'm not gonna paint, but I am gonna paint like the fronts of, but I am gonna paint the sides. Um, so everything is sanded and now I'm gonna get just a damp cloth to get all the dust off before setting up to paint. So we are now set up in the dining room for painting. I did get help to move the desk in here, <laughs> it was amazing. And I just realized that I actually bought two shades of green and that I wasn't sure which one I was gonna use. So now I have to make a paint decision. Um, I've got Benjamin Moore Avon Green, which is, I don't know if you can tell, kind of a lighter, mossy-ish green, a very in color this year it is. It is a, it's a color that's spoken to me on a very deep level recently, but I've always been a green fan. And then Sweet Basil, also by Benjamin Moore, and this is a much darker green. This is the one I was initially going to pick. I had gotten a bunch of samples and tried them out in the room. This is the one I chose, but then afterwards we went to the paint store and I saw this one, so I was like, I'll get both, just little samples. So I'm thinking... Might paint them on a piece of paper, I guess. Really wish I had remembered that I had this problem, so I could have done this before. That would have been, that would have been good. I think we have to go take these into the other room and look at them in the right light. Okay, so we're going with this one. The name that I can't remember, but the lighter green that I spontaneously picked up at the hardware store yesterday. Now it's finally time to paint. I'm nervous. It's been a long time since I painted any furniture. I put like a painting apron on and I feel like I'm just gonna, it's not gonna be enough. This is gonna be messy. I'm a very, very messy painter, but let's get to it. If I'm very productive, I can probably do both coats today. What a dream that would be. Okay, we're coming back. Two hours later, an hour later, I don't know. I feel like I've literally been in a slumber. I don't know, <laughs> time was passing and I wasn't aware of it. But I did two coats on the desk. So I'm gonna flip you guys around so you can see. Um, I think this is wet paint here. So I'm not an amazing furniture painter. That was something that I knew and then also just like very quickly became aware of, but I think we're looking okay. I'm pretty impressed. I'm curious to see how these very wet spots dry tomorrow. Um, hopefully they're not too bumpy because I think I would have to sand them down or something after. Um, I did all the way around and even under a lot of laying under the desk, but just in case I was on the floor, I didn't want to like see the wood underneath. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. I, it's obviously night now <laughs> and the lights are on, so I can't quite get a sense of what it'll look like during the day but it's a fun color. I think I'm glad that I went with this one. Um, and what I will say is it was so fun to paint this. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done something like this. It's been a long time since I've done just in general big projects that are just kind of creative things that I come up with in my head. Um, you know, I've just been in a, that hasn't been the phase of life that I was in recently. It was a weird year for a lot of us and that just like wasn't what I was doing at that time. 
but when we moved into this new apartment, that was a really big goal of mine was to get back into creative projects and things like this. And spending two hours <laughs> painting this desk this Saturday afternoon was so fun to me. I felt so in a flow and just like in a happy place. Um, so yeah, if you have a creative project that you're kind of wanting to do, I encourage you to take it on. I've had this desk for a month now and I've been thinking about painting it and I'm glad that I finally just literally went and bought paint to paint it. Um, and it was so fun. Now I just like, want to paint everything. <laughs> I'm not even a good painter. It's probably going to look like a really bubbly and like drippy, but the act of painting was just so, oh, just so relaxing. Anyway, I'm exhausted. I still haven't spun today. I, everything is a mess now. Um, but I'm at peace. And I'm thinking about watching Tenet tonight, but I also know that I'll hate it. But I also know it's gonna get nominated for an Oscar, so I'll have to watch it eventually. And I do like Robert Pattinson. But I hate a movie that's like an unclear storyline that just like, that drives me insane. So maybe I'll watch Tenet, but if not, it'll be the Great British Bake Off. And I'm just gonna like sit here and watch the paint dry on this desk. <laughs> and then come back to you in the morning. Tomorrow we'll put it in the office and we can get a sense of if I made a good color choice. <laughs> desk is dry and it looks great. I'm gonna flip it around so you guys can see it. I did an inspection and I actually didn't see that many sort of like naked spots that would need to be covered again. So I'm gonna leave it for now. There's gonna be a next step to this. So if there are things that I notice later, I can touch them up. Um, I also painted all the sides of the drawers. I definitely should have taken the hardware off, but also didn't want to. <laughs> and I painted sort of the tops. So when you pulled open the drawer, you would see the green, a little sloppy there. Um, I'm gonna flip this desk over and add these casters on to the bottom of the legs. I don't need the casters for rolling functionality just because we have a carpet. Um, but this desk is just a little bit too short for me. So I thought this looked like an easy way for me just to raise the desk up without kind of trying to think of a way to extend the legs. Um, I got these at our hardware store. Tragically, they were out of the ones with the white wheels. And I also wanted the ball joint kind of ones, but this one seemed, I don't know. They seem like it'd be a little weird to wheel roll. So I got four of these. I'm gonna put them on each of the legs. Hopefully after doing so, it's gonna be easier to move the desk back into the office. And I will show you her currently and then what the next step is for my vision to complete the desk. Okay, so we're fast losing the light because it's gotta be, you know, three, four o'clock in the winter here. But I wanted to give a desk update. Didn't get to end up filming the update on Sunday because my dad came over and helped me do actually a couple other projects, which is great but I got the desk put away for now. Um, this is her kind of in her space. I got the casters on, which visually, whatever, but what I can say is now I can actually sit at this desk in my ugly office chair and my legs fit underneath. So gotta be honest, I actually absolutely love that. Um, you'll see that the front of the desk is still pretty ugly. This is the old desk color and everything, but I ordered my caning on Sunday night. So I just got a shipping notification today. So hopefully the caning gets here soon. And then the last thing I'm missing is a handle. I'm not exactly sure what kind of handles I want to do on here. Something tiny and dainty. And I was looking on Etsy last night for something and wasn't like, I don't know, all the handles that I liked were very expensive for like a single desk handle. So we'll see, but I'm excited for the caning to get here and then I've just gotta go to the hardware store and get some trim to put around the outside of the caning and then we're gonna be done. The other thing we did this weekend was we hung this light in the office. I actually hate how the chain looks. Let me turn off the light to see if it looks better. Okay, let's let this adjust. <laughs> do not like how this chain looks. Um, but the light is actually pretty cute. I got it, you know, really inexpensively from either Facebook or Craigslist Marketplace, I can't remember. Um, and it just kind of has like a little boho look. I feel like the basket lights are very in right now. I always like them. I wish it was a slightly lighter colored basket weave, but uh, I don't know, maybe I can change that. 
And I'm just gonna see if I can live with the dark cord. Um, I know I could change that, so worst comes to worst, but I'm just kind of hoping that I can get over it and be patient. What I wanna do now is tackle this disaster in the bookshelf. We, we should say we, most of these books are mine. <laughs> I organized my books and went through them before we moved. I really felt like I had culled them to the last, like within an inch of their life, really had only kept only, only what I wanted. Um, and I will say, I have a dream one day of having like a major bookshelf, like big built-ins and I just want them to be full of books. So I've always kind of felt hesitant about getting rid of any of my books. Um, but, this bookshelf is over full. <laughs> there is some work that I can do now. I know there are some books on here that I wanted to read that I'm not gonna read. I know there are some books on here that I'm definitely not gonna read again. I can let go of some. I'm gonna continue buying books in my life so my future bookshelves will still be full. I can move on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything off the bookshelf. I'm gonna clean the bookshelf because we've gotten a little dusty. And then I'm gonna make a pile of books to donate to the library and hopefully get the rest of the books that we're keeping back up on here. Maybe we'll do a rainbow, maybe not. I did do a backwards facing bookshelf in our last apartment, um, which I absolutely loved. I am not here for judgment about it. Um, where you like turn all the spines so the only the pages are showing. And it just looks so uniformed and cute. And I'm a book lover, I love books. I don't think it's sacrilegious or anything. I think it's a wonderful way to appreciate your books if maybe you buy a lot of like YA novels that have colorful spines and aren't super aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so first things first, everything off the bookshelf. Okay, I think my initial idea is I'm gonna start with a color coordination look. So what I'm gonna do is go through and put all the books in piles by color. We're gonna go white, cream, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, <sighs> maybe brown, black. Those ones are always weird. Anyway, so. I'm going to take all these piles, I'm going to sort them into colors, and while I'm sorting them into colors, I am going to ruthlessly sort out the ones that I'm definitely not going to read again, or read, or reread, or like give away. Okay, I'm on the floor with my books, and I'm already having a crisis of my decision, <laughs> because I do kind of like to categorize my books, even when I have them facing backwards, I had like certain kinds of books together, so... I'm stressed a little about this choice. Also, what I'm having to do is break up um, series, which is another kind of like reason that a lot of people don't like this method of organization. However, what I am trying to remind myself of as I'm doing this is that I can always change it later. Nothing is forever. So I'm just going through it. I'm taking a deep breath. Um, the other thing I will say, if you're color categorizing your bookshelves and you don't know what to do with a book that's like many colors, this is green, pink, and blue, I kind of set these aside and then put the bookshelf together and then stick them in in the green. I mean, typically you're going to go with the most, most predominant color, but I just put them in the bookshelf and I kind of see where I think they look best. So maybe it slots in best with the kind of, this is almost like purple, the purpley blues. Um, maybe let's start with the green. So I just kind of set the ones that are question mark books to the side and come back to them once I put everything together because I generally have a better sense about where they go um, on the stack. All right, so I ended up wrapping after it got pretty dark last night, but this is the final bookshelf for now um I did put the printer back on there for the time being <laughs> all these bottom books are Eric's um I don't love that stack there but I'm gonna let it be for now um but yeah you know 
I might fiddle with it now that I'm seeing it in the light of day. I, I have some colors that I want to sort a bit more. It was getting kind of tricky to see everything last night. But um, this is our current setup. I'm thrilled the caning got here last night. It got here so quickly. And here's the light during the day. Um, I ordered it from Cane and Basket in Los Angeles. I also went over to my parents last night for dinner and kind of scrounged through my dad's workshop and found wood trim. So I'm hoping that this will work for my desk because then I wouldn't have to go to the hardware store. I could just use this. And I got some um, stucco and stuff. I already have nails and everything else. So what I'm thinking is not now because I'm a little tired. It's like the end of the work day on a Thursday. But tomorrow or this weekend, um, I'll be able to prep. And just so you guys remember, I can't remember if I filmed this or not. I'm just going to do the front of these desks. So caning in the middle and then the wood trim around it. And I'm going to paint the wood trim green. But I am feeling, you know, that desire to keep the project moving. And I know I don't want to do this painting right now because I am worried that I'll mess it up because I'm tired. But I can continue to tackle this disaster behind me which is boxes and stuff these are like boxes we have to keep because they're new speakers for Eric's desk and you know you like keep boxes for sort of like tech purchases until you're sure they're the right thing um but there's just like a pile of stuff back there so i'm gonna take this time this precious time to go through those boxes go through all the stuff over there which is just like stuff that we honestly don't know what to do with it's like old vintage cameras and stuff that were like my grandparents that my parents gave us and it's just like i just don't know if, if i'm an old vintage camera person right now and then of course we have our trampoline our my trampoline <laughs> i take full responsibility for this trampoline but what I'm thinking is if I clear out that whole corner, I can put the trampoline on the ground at least. So it's not leaning against the window, just being like a hideous trampoline. Um, and we have a good amount of space in that closet back there for the trampoline to live. So that's what I'm going to do now. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do now um, in an attempt to feel like I am making productive future progress on this little project of mine. I'm also coming on here to say that I've been obsessed with the You're Wrong About podcast um, during this DIY project. <laughs> it doesn't show up well. Um, I did the How You Lose Your Parents to Fox News episode and then I listened to another one that was super interesting about oh, the Electoral College and no was it on it was really interesting it's like one of those things that i never understood that i thought i understood oh yeah the electoral college and now i'm doing the diana deep dive and it's so fun because i love the royals i had listened to them before and kind of fallen off and then someone recommended the fox news app so i listened to it and anyway it's really interesting so if you guys like kind of like fun podcast where you get like the satisfaction of feeling like you've learned something afterwards I recommend the uh you're wrong about and that's what I'm gonna blast right now while I continue this project <laughs> okay checking in from this project on Saturday so I've gone ahead and cut all of the caning to fit the front of the drawers and I have also trimmed the trim for these drawers um, down and I've cut them into 45 degree angles with a miter saw. Honestly, very impressed with this, my work here. I have a feeling that because this is a reused piece of trim, it's not all perfectly even. I just noticed that, um, but I don't feel like I'm gonna do it again. Anyway, I used a miter saw, like I said, to cut these. That was amazing. To get the 45 degree angles, I don't think I would have been able to do that otherwise. And now I'm in a bit of a predicament with the trim for this drawer, just because the trim is actually like, if I put it on without trimming it down, what we're looking at is a very small gap in the, a gap for the cane to show. They're like, that's just ridiculous. 
so I think what I need to do is cut this in half, but I mean, the tools that I have on hand here are like some hand saws and a skill saw, and because this is so thin, I'm just like, oh, feels like would be a beast with a skill saw, but I also don't want to go over to my dad's to use his table saw because that seems like too much effort, so... I'm gonna spend some time thinking about that. But while I am thinking that through and maybe testing cutting us in half with the skill saw, that might be a really bad idea. Um, I'm gonna fill the bathtub with just like a little bit of water and soak all of the caning because you're supposed to soak it for like 30 to 40 minutes before you um, put it onto the wood. Okay, coming at you with an update one hour later, I have spent a lot of time cutting pieces of wood and sanding them, and I am honestly so proud of myself. This, it does not look perfect, but all things considered, me with my little skill saw hanging off my kitchen table with like cutting what is a half an inch of um, trim. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. My arms are exhausted, but look, Looky here, we've got a little border for all of these. Oh, wow, I'm proud of myself. I hope it doesn't look awkward that these are different widths. Oh God, if it does, I will really have a breakdown. I guess I could cut these in half, but that was really not a fun project, so I'd like to not do that. All right, so I've painted all my pieces of trim, and I've kind of placed them all on the drawer fronts. Are they perfect? No, absolutely not. I'm not gonna become a <laughs> Finnish uh, furniture maker anytime soon. But all in all, I'm pretty impressed. It's been a long time since I've used a saw. So what I'm thinking is I'm actually gonna try wood gluing the fronts on. I was going to use tiny finishing nails and then kind of putty over and paint over them, but if the wood glue works, that might be a little more seamless looking. Um, I only have four clamps, so I'm gonna do one desk at a time, wood glue, clamp it, let it dry, and move on to the next. There is a slight gap between the trim and the drawer, obviously where the caning is, and I'm just gonna ignore that for now and <laughs> um, see if I can kinda like move on from it. If it bugs me, I might put some putty or something in there and paint it. But all in all, pretty impressed and curious to see how the wood glue works for me. All right, here's the update. Um, glue, using some books. This is the wood glue I'm using. Use some books to hold it down. Hopefully this will do it so I don't have to use clamps. Um, the nice thing about the wood glue actually was that I could move the pieces around so it wasn't like you nailed one piece and you put another piece in and then actually you need to move that piece. <laughs> kind of everything is uh, malleable for a little bit, but I think the key is gonna be, is the glue enough? Because it is going from the trim layer through the retain layer or the cane layer to the drawer. So we'll see. I'm just gonna leave it here for hours. <laughs> Meanwhile, my desk is a disaster because everything has been taken out of it. Um, but yeah, and I did have to sand a few of the edges to make the pieces fit together better. So if this is something you try, you know, this isn't exactly like a tutorial. It's kind of like, like an untutorial like Sola does for Food 52, which is like, here's a concept, here are the steps, and you can kind of recreate it with whatever. Um, you kind of take this untutorial and try it with a desk or any piece of furniture that you find. Um, Pro tip, you could always just kind of sand it down more to finesse your 45 degree angles if they maybe aren't exactly perfect <laughs> because we're not furniture makers. I mean, maybe you are, but I'm not. So anyway, I'm gonna leave this and fingers crossed that it, that it works. <laughs> okay, uh, floor update, because if this isn't where a DIY, DIY always leaves you, just like kind of tired on your floor, then, then I wanna know your secret. <laughs> Yesterday, I glued the fronts to the drawers and then I just put heavy books on top of them to hold everything in place and dry. Worked great. Um, now, I 
decided on a whim that I do want to kind of putty up the gaps that the caning caused between the trim and the existing drawer. So I just used some spackle because I had it. I'm really not sure if that was a good idea, so I will update you guys on if spackle is the move for this, but it just seemed easy and I kind of was like, whatever. Um, so I just pushed that in between, flattened it out with a spackle knife, and I'm going to let it dry. Then I'm going to paint over it with the green again. I'll do a little sanding and then I'll paint it. Um, and then we're done for today because I still haven't found handles that I like. I had gotten these ones, just kind of like a bronzy gold um, bathroom handle, or bathroom or kitchen hardware essentially from Home Depot. It was the only thing that I even kind of like sort of liked for this there um but it's just too big i really want just like a small little uh bronze knob preferably kind of like an aged looking older bronze so i need to do more research i scoured etsy the other day and just didn't really find anything um so maybe i need to scour again and then do like a rub and buff okay so i let the spackle dry painted over them around the edges. I'm glad I did it. I think it looks a lot more seamless from the top. And you can tell from the side that there's a gap. But from the top, when you're kind of sitting at the desk and pulling it out, it's a lot more seamless looking. Um, I'm not pushing them in all the way yet because the paint is still drying. But yeah, that's that. I'm glad I did it. You'll also see I have these pieces of tape hanging below the drawers. That is just so I can open and close them once I shove them in um, until I get handles. And now I'm going to put everything back in the drawers. And this is where we're at until I find handles. But I'm into it. I think it's cute. So let's hope I can find cute, simple little handles and we can call this done. Okay, coming in with a thrilling update. We finally got our Ikea curtains in. We're going to try the Ringloma. Ringle ring bloma I don't know whatever it's actually a drape but instead of a normal drape that you have to install that has the pull strings these have clips that allow you to raise them up and down and oh and they're magnetic it seems and best of all they cost about $20 <laughs> so that's such a win um you can definitely install it by using nails and just nailing it in either within your window frame or above your window and it also seems like you can take this bar out and hang this on a curtain rod, which actually makes it a pretty useful and nifty tool that you can do it both ways. The curtain rod that we have currently is not going to be wide enough for these. The, they only have two sizes of this drape, so I went for the biggest one and it's going to extend a little bit outside the window, but um, it wouldn't fit within these two things that we already have there. So we're currently debating, do we rehang a curtain rod and take this off or do we just kind of put a nail on the wall? I'm kind of thinking, Eric, the nail might just look a little bit more uh, there's simple. There's actually no instructions. I know. As per Ikea, the instructions are wild. No, and no, then in this case, there's just like no instructions. There's literally no instructions. But we know that we can use nails. I mean, that's like... That's how you are supposed okay, to Okay, will you hold this up on the window so I can look at it? I won't get you on video, Eric's not, <laughs> Eric's not ready to be filmed. Um, I think, I think let's just take down the curtain rods and hang it with nails. You're talking about these guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. All right, removing these was an actual nightmare. They were from the person who lived here before us who seemingly didn't know how to hang. Um, how to use a screwdriver. Okay, so for now, these need to be covered over, but I think we'll be able to kind of skip that step by just hanging the blinds above this. Um, so you'll never see it, it's kind of a lazy hack. And then we're just gonna use tiny little screws just to test it to make sure that it all works. Nail things, Eric, <laughs> what are words? Um, so I just need to find the center of the window because I have two of these and they're both going to extend a little bit past the edge of the window. Um, hang it up with some temporary screws, hopefully cover these like really ugly marks and then we'll be done. I'm already happy to have an ugly <laughs> railing thing gone. Okay. All right. So it's really bright. <laughs> I'm kind of focusing the camera up here so the light doesn't get too intense. 
but they're hung just on little nails for now as we're testing it. Um, there is definitely going to be a slight gap between them in the middle. It's just kind of hard to make it perfect there. But otherwise, it's a pretty good solution. I'm going to hand the camera to Eric so I can. They come with little clips to make it easier to do this, but we probably won't use the clips because I don't like how they look. Um, but you just release the magnetic strips and you can adjust the height that you want them to be at. I mean, all in all, for a drape, I feel like $20 each, that's a really good solution. Drapes are typically like in the hundreds of dollars. So they're nice. I feel like this one will be for Eric's desk and it provides um, just the right amount of coverage so he doesn't get a lot of computer glare while also not blocking all the light. So, so far, first few minutes of installation, very happy with these. Couldn't be easier to install, couldn't be easier to use. And I think just because of all the stuff we have right here, um, a much better solution than curtains. So I'm feeling really, really pleased with this. <laughs> what do you think? Do you like them? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they definitely help your computer situation. Yeah. I joked that Eric, but this is Valentine's Day gift because he was complaining about the glare on his computer. <laughs> anyway, so that is that done. I'll try to get a different video sometime later where the, the sun isn't coming crazy. in because the back leg yeah, is too much. But 20 bucks for a drape? I mean, I am just I'm pretty pleased. Pretty pleased with myself. And I don't think I'm going to be too bothered by that little gap in the middle. So there you go, one little update done. All right, sitting on my floor feeling mighty pleased with myself because we have handles. <laughs> really required um, some finesse to get these handles in the drawers. I had to like take the drawers apart to do it, but we're done. I pulled the tape off these two and then wanted to ceremoniously Got that on video. Tape works really well, by the way. Always a good idea if you're missing a handle for something. <laughs> um, but, ah, handle. And these are the ones that I went with. There, let's see if I can kind of, oh my gosh, I feel like I've lost my mind. That was actually like a real project. Um, this is the handle that I went with. Just like really tiny, small, kind of like a vintage look. I wanted it to be pretty streamlined with the desk, not really stand out, um, but just have like a little character. So yes, one, two, three. <sighs> it's time for the final reveal. I am so thrilled. This is a month in the making, it feels like. Not a month of solid work, but you know, you've been here. And here we are, the finished desk area bookshelf. Um, I have been loving this desk. It brings me joy every time I see it. It is exactly what I wanted to buy and I couldn't find. It's just working perfectly in this space. Ugh, I love it so much. Um, handles are great. I will be sure to link the handles and the caning that I used and um, even the pink color, if I can remember what it was, in case you guys want to try a version of this. If you guys do an iteration of this desk flip, I would love to know. Please send me pictures. Um, it was super easy, super affordable, and I think it looks great in space. It has like a custom, custom look. I've got this print hung. This is new since our last update. It's from Jennifer Arment. I love it. I love the magic hands over the workstation. Um, my calendar collection. This one's from a Pointed Co. And this is a grammar calendar that I just love. Um, yeah, so this just feels, uh, it just feels bright and fresh. Everything is cleaned up. No more boxes stacked everywhere. The bookshelf, if you recall, was a cluttered mess and it now is just simple and streamlined. The light is working great. I'm so happy to have the other lamp out of here. And this window treatment has been hanging for all of 30 minutes maybe, and I'm obsessed with it. It makes such an impact compared to what we had before, which was just kind of like a very gauzy hanging curtain. Um, and they just, now that I'm seeing this, 
I can recognize that the other curtains made the space feel really cluttered and really messy. And I think it's because the curtain rods was hanging out and they would always, like they wouldn't close all the way because of the desk. Um, so this has been a huge impact in a matter of 30 minutes. So I can only imagine how I'll feel about them tomorrow. I just am so happy to have those other curtains gone. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but the mechanism for getting these to move is just magnets. It's very simple. I will definitely keep you guys updated on how they last. They certainly weren't very expensive, but Ikea products tend to last for me. So I'm thrilled with these and I make sure, I'll make sure to like let you guys know how they last in the long run. And I will say like this is my next area to tackle and I already feel like significantly less bothered by it because the rest of the area feels so open and clean and bright. So that is my final little mini office update. Thank you for sticking it out with this video if you've stuck it out because I know it's going to be a long one. Um, but I just am really happy with it. I hope that you feel creatively inspired to take a space that maybe feels cluttered and messy to you or that you have a vision for that you just haven't executed. Um, I hope you feel inspired to take it on. You know, this was maybe a month, but it was. <laughs> and I did say one week at the beginning. That was a lie to myself, I guess. Um, it wasn't a lot of work in the long run. It was just like little bits here and there when I could fit it in around work and stuff. And it's so impactful and if you think about it your office where you spend all your time and you're working it just it should be a space that feels clear and clutter free and inspiring so i am delighted i have you know some goals maybe to take this to the next level eventually but for now huge impact i i love it and i hope you feel inspired to tackle a space and kind of make it your own too um, I also really want to know if anyone tries this desk hack. <laughs> I really want to see pictures. Uh, the next thing I'll be doing is the closet update. I've already got the shelves in there and it's crazy how impactful that is to have the shelving. Um, and I just got some bins in, some cutie little bins. So I'm thrilled and really excited to make this like an amazing little craft closet. And yes, like this video if you like this. It helps me know if this is the kind of content that you guys are interested in. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated on my how the window treatments hang and if you want to see the craft closet when it's done. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you move forward in your day and create a little magic for yourself. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.